On these Knicks, man, we, we got to start it off with, with Julius Randle. He's been the talk of the town. Averaged 28 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists in the month of December. You have, um, you know, shooting his, his best effective field goal percentage since he's been on the Knicks. Mid-range, 44%. A career low in turnover percentage. Um, just, just all across the board, Julius Randle is playing outstanding basketball. And to me, that was going to be one of the keys to a successful season for this team. It was obviously going to be how can Julius, will Julius be able to turn it around after an abysmal season last year? I believe he was like third in his position in effective field goal percentage last year. Now that's up to 60th percentile. What have you seen between last year and this year uh, is the key difference in Julius Randle? Well, he came into the year offensively, I think really embracing this new role that he's in, right? I mean, they, they bring in Jalen Brunson and he's just playing off the ball more. His shot selection has changed. I think the shot selection stuff is independent of Jalen Brunson. Uh, you know, I, I he he's and he's good. He's certainly better to start the year than he was last year, but he wasn't playing like he did in December and, and like he is right now. It's reached a new level. And if you look at the last few weeks, he actually is, you know, at the start of the year, it was like no long range deuce and, and just try to get to the rim and all of that. And, and if you look at the last few weeks, it's almost like he's found like a nice little middle ground. I think sometimes when you look at players, they have to go to their extremes to test their limits. And then they find a middle ground that's, that's good and comfortable for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like Jeremy Grant is a good example of that, mm -hmm. where Jeremy Grant was in Denver. He was a role player. Uh, he was really kind of catch and shoot on the outside. Every once in a while, he put it on the ground. But he was a he was a fourth, fifth option inside their, their best lineups and wasn't as much. And then he decides he wants to be a first option. He goes to Detroit, and he is scoring like crazy, but he's not doing it efficiently, and the team isn't winning, and he's not playing winning basketball. And now he's in Portland. He's found a nice middle ground, right? Where he's got a much bigger role than he did in Denver, but he's still with Dame and he's with Anthony Simons and it's a different sort of situation. So what does that have to do with Julius Randle? You might rightfully ask. Mm. Uh, I think Randle kind of in a similar way had to go to the extremes of like, I'm never shooting long twos. I'm only shooting threes and at the rim. And now we see him taking more acceptable long twos yeah. than he did. You know, like, He's not dribbling around for 14 seconds and shooting a fadeaway for the most part. These are balanced standstill mid-range shots. I think that's why you see the mid-range percentages better. I mean, you mentioned 44 from mid-range. Last year, he was in the low 30s. He was one right. of the worst uh, you know, high-volume mid-range shooters in the NBA. That's a, it's a really unacceptable number. This year, he's at a really good one again. You know, the, the types of shots can change, even if the locations are, are somewhat similar. I think we're just seeing him as a quicker decision maker, a better decision maker. And look, more shots are going in. Like he's taking more threes and he's shooting, shooting a higher percentage of them. Looks good when the shots go in. Uh, but I think it's kind of a mix of all of that that we're seeing from Randall, sort of him testing his extremes and then realizing, okay, this is the sort of analytically friendly stuff that's going to work the best for me. Yeah. And he is correct. It's working. Yeah, he just seems to be in, in a comfort zone and a groove right now that we haven't seen since that All-Star year in 2020, 2021, in which a lot of people attributed to no fans in the stands. Right now, you really can't make that argument, man, because the places are packed. The Knicks are, are one of five teams with, with a above 500 road record. He's a big part of that. Uh, top of the league in terms of first quarter scoring. So he just seems to be just just in this groove offensively, man, where he's just taking what the defensive is giving him. If he's on a smaller matchup, which in a lot of nights he is, you know, when, when you look at the size and the physicality that he brings to the game, a lot of teams, when they're bringing single coverage at him, it's a smaller, it's, a lot of times it's a, it's a smaller player. And he's picking his poison, whether he wants to attack the basket. He's getting a lot, he's drawing a lot of fouls on those rip throughs. So he's doing a good job of really just taking what the defense is giving him and, and using it to his advantage. Yeah, that's another part of it, too. That's a good point. The rip-throughs, man. Like, he's always had that move, but he's going to it like crazy yeah. now, right? Yeah. Where he – he, this is an era where a lot of guys who are good at rip-throughs are still good at them, but 
they're not good at getting them into shooting fouls. Right, right. Julius, you know, for example, Chris Paul is famous for using a rip through, yeah. right? But now with the way that referees have started calling it in the last five years or so, if Chris Paul goes for a rip through into a shot, they're going to call it side out. That's right. It's not a shooting foul. It's it's on the floor. And and it's great to use in the bonus. And it's great to use when you have a great defender on you or something. They get a hand in. You want to get an extra foul on them. But it's it's not as good as when you can get into a shooting foul. And there's something with Julius. I, I think it's that his, his shooting motion is so quirky. Like they – they see that he will shoot in those sorts of weird, like his legs bent when he's midway in the air and his his torsos to the side. They'll shoot at these weird, strange angles that like they can't be like it's not a shot because he probably would have shot it like that. <laughs> uh, and 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 if if you're going to get those fouls, if it's really going to work like it has, I think he has really good recognition of when somebody has a hand in the cookie jar, too. Like yeah. That's part of it. Like if you put a hand into, you know, above his, above his hand, like he is going to hit it and you are going to get called for a foul. That's just how he's operating now. And again, it comes back to, that's just quick reactions, right? That's quick decision-making. That's noticing this guy's got his hand where it's not supposed to, I'm going up. And and there are a lot of guys in the league who are, who are awesome at that. Uh, Obviously James Harden, Mm -hmm. obviously Chris Paul, DeMar DeRozan is amazing at that. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of guys in the league who are excellent at that. And I think Julius Randle is is one of them at drawing that specific kind of foul, especially because he just turns them into shooting fouls now. You got to give him credit for that, man. The free throw attempts are up as well. And his shooting foul draw rate and non-shooting foul draw rate are, are up as well. And you can see it on the court. So he's just doing a great job and uh, and really just exposing uh, defenses and, and being a smarter player. So that that's definitely well-deserved on, on his part. But um, he gives a lot of credit to Jalen Brunson for his improvement this year and just overall when you when you look at the starting lineup obviously the the, the Brunson impact is noticeable what Quentin Grimes is bringing to this team RJ Barrett is certainly before pre-finger injury was was taking another step up this is I mean yes this team is only hovering around the the eighth spot but this is right now to me in terms of complementary pieces the best group that he's played with when you look at Quickly's maturation coming off of the bench, what the offense is bringing, Mitchell Robinson's maturation as well, I think as a whole, the team is is allowing him to be a better player as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Uh, definitely, definitely the Brunson stuff. You're right. He is he is very complimentary of Jalen Brunson. And I think he's right too. I mean, you know, for example, you talk about his turnover rate being down. Well, it's because he doesn't have to initiate as yeah, much. Yeah. Like his, it's not just that people talk about, well, you have a good point guard and all of a sudden your shots are easy. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely true, but it's not the whole story. It's actually that you have a good point guard and your touches are easier. Right. Like he has a good point guard who sets him up in a good situation, not just to shoot. Cause the point of basketball isn't just create something and then pass it out, and then that person you pass it to takes a shot. Mm -hmm. It's you create something, you pass it to somebody, and that person you pass it to makes a decision. Mm -hmm. They cut, or they go into another action, or they shoot, or they pass, or whatever. And it is easier to make that decision right now because of the way Jalen Brunson sets everybody up. I mean, look at how the offense played in those games that Brunson wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah, they they scored some points. Like they scored some points against Houston. Mm-hmm. It was Houston, but they <laughs> scored some points against Houston. But just look at the offensive process. I mean, it was quickly and it was Randall taking all of the shots. Yeah. And Randall played well because he's just playing incredible basketball right now. He played well. I don't think he needs Jalen Brunson to play well at this point. But for the team to play well, I mean, Jalen Brunson just makes everybody's job so much easier. He's he's just so competent in terms of the way that he organizes everything and i think that has a profound effect on julius randall and just about everybody else to be honest no question about it and we're talking to fred katz who covered the covers the knicks for the athletic and on the on the randall front his mental approach to the game what have you seen you know last year was a tough year for him 
You had the thumbs down incident with the fans. I remember there was a game prior to the thumbs down incident. I, I believe it was against the Pacers where I think he either got an N1, he fell on the floor, and then he was jawing at somebody in the crowd. It just seemed like there, there was just a lot of uh, distractions for him. The and vibes were bad. The vibes were bad. It, they were bad. Yeah. Him. But yeah. this year, it, it, it just seems like he, he's in a better place mentally. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, look, I, I've had conversations with NBA players before mm. who have warned me. Whenever a guy is playing weirdly uncharacteristically for a long time, stop looking at the basketball. Mm. Just don't stop. Stop looking at what's wrong with his jump shot. Stop looking at what's he doing with his footwork. Just is probably something that has nothing to do with basketball. Uh, And yeah, the vibes were just weird last year. I mean, there was, there was the the fine, which technically went to the team, where he didn't mm-hmm. he didn't talk to the media for seven consecutive games. Mm-hmm. Uh, after uh, there was yeah, there was the thumbs down incident. There was, and it was just weird behind the scenes vibes mm-hmm. too, like they just weren't very good. And and this year, I think he's come in with a very, just a, a completely different attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting seeing how he performed last year. I wouldn't have guessed that he was going to so willingly take a role change, right? right. Mm-hmm. Like the question when Kemba came in, right? part of the reason they brought in Kemba and Evan Fournier was to take some of the ball handling burden off of Julius Randle. Now, it didn't work, mm-hmm. but those were the intentions, right? Yeah. And maybe it was because Randle just recognized these guys aren't as good as me, and so they're not going to take the ball handling burden off of me. And – it's not technically wrong if that was what his thought process was, but you know, he didn't necessarily relinquish any of those duties that we're talking about. You know, their crunch time offense was still kind of run a pick and roll for Julius. Mm-hmm. He's going to go to the nail and then he's going to post a guy up, face a guy up and mm-hmm. take a bad shot. And, and that's going to be it. I didn't necessarily expect him to so willingly He's not taking a back seat, but just so willingly change his role uh, in terms of more catch and shoot stuff, more mm-hmm. threes, less mid range, less off the dribble. Uh, when you touch the ball, you're not going to touch it for as long. Quicker right. decisions, all that stuff. Uh, running the floor more, um, and and you know what? Over these last fifteen ish games, playing much harder defensively. Yeah, I just I didn't see all of those things changing so enthusiastically. Uh, and so willingly, it's like there was no resistance on his part, and that stuff helps. It, when you play looser, when you when you welcome the change, good things are are can happen. And right now, he is showing that. I mean, he's for sure. I don't know if he's going to make the All Star team, but he's definitely one of the people you have to mention when you talk about you know, possible Eastern Conference All-Stars. It's a tough one, man, because as you mentioned All-Star, I kind of wrote down the, the guys who I think are locks, right? Obviously, it's the Greek freak. Uh, Embiid, I've got Katie, Donovan Mitchell, Siakam, Tatum and Brown. I got to put Kyrie in there. I think Kyrie is, is definitely deserving. Um, yeah, I think I agree On the you. court. You know, Halliburton. I've got Halliburton yeah. there. Now, Not that, a fake All-Star. Not a fake All-Star. <laughs> so, I've got... I've got 10 so far, right? I've got nine so far, rather. And 12 make the team. You want to put DeRozan in there? Beal, you got to talk about Bam as well. Heat Heat is certainly surging after a slow start. It's going to be tough, man, but I think Randall deserves to be in there. If you're going to put him in that that borderline with with DeMar and Beal, I got to give him the edge for how his team is played and how he's impacting those wins. I, I think it's tough, man, but I still got to give him the edge and get him in there. Yeah. And did, did you say Donovan Mitchell? Yes, also? I did. Yeah. Or did yeah. I? Yeah. I, t- okay. I said Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to say, he, he's getting in there. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there are some other guys too. I mean, Jimmy, J- Jimmy Butler yeah. has an argument. Uh, I think James Harden has an argument. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously he's not the player that he used to be, but the, the dude is still like a really good point guard. And yeah. He has absolutely massive games. I think. Darius Garland has an argument. Mm-hmm. I think Drew Holiday has an argument. 
there are a lot of a lot of guys who have a chance of getting in. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, Beal with Washington. Yeah, I think there is a case to be made for a former Nick who happens to play for the <laughs> Washington <laughs> Wizards. <as> well, <laughs> you put you put Porzingis in there great with year. Julius. Porzingis is having a good year, man. I hate to admit it, but he's having a good year. I, man. The the only reason that I would argue for Porzingis over Julius is just to see the reaction on this podcast. <laughs> if that were to happen, that would, emergency that would be the one reason I would advocate across the Knicks exactly. be emergency podcast I, everywhere. I, I think seeing Nick's Twitter <laughs> just react to that would, would be worth it. Even if it's not technically the right basketball decision. No question. Uh, unfortunately, I have I have a little a little bit too much journalistic integrity to <laughs> let that determine my vote if I get one, but but I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it. It would be yeah. unbelievably funny. Uh, I would say Julius has a really good argument over Beal. The thing that Julius has going for him with All Star mm. is quantity. Uh, he has played what the third or fourth most minutes in the NBA right, right. now. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy like Beal has been hurt. Uh, James Harden is missing time. Like it's quantity matters. People mm -hmm. crap on quantity. Guess what? It matters. More of a good thing is a better thing. Yeah, right, right. It's, that's how it works. These aren't these aren't cookies. It's not like once you, once you eat two of them, you're like, oh no, I got to start really worrying about the calories right. now. No, more more of a good thing is a better thing. Mm -hmm. If I told you you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year or a million dollars a year, you wouldn't be like, oh, no, I don't want the quantity. Yeah, right, right. I don't want the quantity. You'll you'll take the million. More mm -hmm. of a good thing is a better thing. And Julius Randle doing, having really, really, really good production over a lot of time where he's been available in a in a league, by the way, when no one is consistently available. In. Right. I mean, he's played in every game. Right. Uh, it's, it's impressive. By the way, Jalen Brunson, is in the conversation sure. too. I think there is an argument for Brunson over Julius Randle for the exact reason that we just discussed, mm -hmm. where like part of Randle's credit, the product the credit for Randle's production, part of it has to go to Brunson. Yeah. Like Brunson is the guy who makes everything in that offense tick. Mm -hmm. And and Randall for you know how good he's been lately, the first 15, 18 games, whatever it was. Defensively, he was, you know, really one of their biggest defensive culprits during that slow defensive start that they got off to. And it's yeah. changed since. And I don't think that it all disqualifies him, but it should be part of the conversation for sure. But yeah, he's been mm -hmm. he's been really, really good. I don't know if he gets in. Like he's averaging, you know, what, 20, 23 a game or yeah. whatever. Uh, and that's like 20th in the NBA. He's like 10th or 9th or 11th, whatever it is, in the Eastern Conference in scoring. You know, we, we're conditioned to see 23 points a game. We're like, damn, that's really good. Right. And now it's like, yeah, it's really good, but we, we have to remove the damn because yeah. everyone is scoring like crazy this year. Everyone is scoring like crazy, man. <laughs> I, I think the stat is there's uh, 88 players have scored 40-plus this year already, and the, I believe the record is, uh, that's insane. is 142 back in 1961 yeah i was looking at it yesterday afternoon yeah and 50, 54 players in the league are averaging 20 points a game yeah 54 Crazy. that used to be like oh you're averaging 20 you're right in the conversation for this and yeah. now it's like they could double the size of the all-star team and still not get yeah. every player still have snubs. 20 into the all-star game. S still have yeah. snubs, man. It it's incredible. The, the, the offensive talent that, that we have in this league.